Hello and welcome to another Igloo Imaging tutorial. This one is on chain brushes. So I'm going to teach you how to make three different types of brushes that will enable you to add these chain effects to anything, any any brush line, any shape, um, any path. So let's get started. My outboard is 1920 pixels by 1080 high and it's CMYK. We don't need any colors for this one because I'm just gonna move on to a new artboard and it's just black and white. So the first one I'm gonna show you is this bike chain, this repeating pattern here. Um, and let's just get cracking. So these are the stages we're gonna do and I'm just gonna talk you through them. So we're gonna go up to the, you might see the rectangle tool and we're gonna select ellipse. By the way, if you want to hit pause and copy my layout, the navigator, artboards, all these windows that you can see, just press pause now and copy anything that's got a tick next to it, okay? And then also under view, smart guides and snap to point. So if you get that sorted, then if you even if you want to put it in this sort of workflow, um, this is what I've developed over 20 years of being a graphic designer. So it might help you, but smart guides, definite under view. Okay, so let's go ahead with choose, um, pick the ellipse tool and you're gonna just click and hold shift and it'll give you a nice perfect circle. Um, we're gonna make sure it's black and then what we're gonna do is select it with V and press command C, which is copy, command shift V, which is paste in place. So now we've got two. And we're just gonna grab this and make it smaller, but we're gonna hold option and shift. Now, you don't need to be exact on, on this one. Even the space in between these two doesn't matter. It's just, um, once you've got the brush, it, it, you know, it, it's not gonna matter. So you can customize it as much as you want. You can add in other reflections, other dots, rivets, whatever you wanna do. So these two here, we're gonna go to Pathfinder and it's the second one in, which is minus front. And it's gonna do that. We're gonna copy it across. So we're gonna select, press option press V, select it first, press option so you get two cursors, drag and click and hold shift. And you want it about that far apart. Now we're gonna go back to the ellipse tool, click and hold and select the rectangle tool, shortcuts M, and we're gonna draw a rectangle between these two shapes, about there. Now you don't want it to go over like that because we're gonna unite these in a minute. So you want it to be within this. Now, just to make sure that we're in the middle, we can either move it and then press shift and move it until it says intersect, or we can select this one, hold shift and select this one, group them together, which is command G. So now when I select one, they both move and we can select all of that. And then in alignment, we want to vertical align to center. Now that jumped up there because I had a preset of align to artboard. If you drop this drop down here and align to selection, and then do it. I'll show you, I'll move it down here. And then we want vertical align center. And then you know it's exactly in the middle. Once you've done that, back to Pathfinder and unite them. Now we've got one solid shape. So we wanna press A, which is direct select, and select these two um, anchor points here, hold shift and select these two. Now, if you're in CS6, you probably won't see this round corner option um, but anything after that, you should be okay. And you're just gonna grab it and pull it all the way out until it goes red. Now, what we've got is one of the links and we want to add in a center point. So I'm zooming right into this. Um, and because you've got smart guides on, when you select the pen, as you move into the center, you'll see that pink line appear. So just in between these two anchor points appear, when it, the pink line appears, just click this is a bit harder, these are too close together. So I wanna click and then I'm gonna, with direct select, I'm gonna select all of these onto this side, including that little one. So press shift, zoom back out, and I'm just gonna delete them. Okay, now if I press Command Y, which is just outline mode, you can see there's a gap between it. Now if you just hit Command J, it just joins those two together. Command Y, back out of outline mode, and there we go. So now we've got one side of the, the brush. 
we need to have this center connector and the other side of the brush. So if I just move this across and I'm going to do the option shift thing again. So option, which gets you two cursors, click and drag and hold shift, move it out that way. Now you can either rotate this round holding shift or you can go up to here, which is the reflect tool. You might see rotate. If you do just click and hold reflect, double click it and you want vertical click. Okay. Um, and now we want to draw this center bit. Um, the center bit, we want it to be the same height as that rectangle we drew. So if we just come over here somewhere and, and draw sort of a rectangle, it doesn't have to be exact again, about the same height as that. And we're going to drag this one into the middle. Again, we don't want it to go over the circle. So let's just do that. What we did before, we're going to select this one, press shift, select this one, group them together, command G, select all of them and vertical align. So we know it's in the middle. We can ungroup this by pressing command shift G and then it just it ungrouped. Now what we want to do is get this, this line here, this sort of buffer zone, this white line. So we're going to take this one and this one, hold shift. And now we've got two. I'm going to command C, command shift V, which is paste in place. And for this, let's, we can keep it black actually. We'll just drag the fill over to the stroke and we want to put the weight of the stroke up to, let's have a look. Um, maybe 10, 11, 11. Okay, and then go up to Object, Expand, Fill and Stroke, and it goes a bit nuts, and we just go back to Pathfinder and Unite. So now we've got these two big shapes, okay? And all we're gonna do, you can do it a couple of ways, but we're just gonna hit, we're gonna select these two big shapes, press Shift, select the rectangle, and then we're gonna press the, sec the second Pathfinder button, minus Front. Okay, so that gets us our pattern. Now we're going to select it all and group it, Command G. I'm going to shrink this down a bit, okay, because it doesn't need to be that big. And under brushes, just select the little burger and new brush. And it needs to be a pattern brush. And you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call this bike two because I've already got them. Uh, you can leave everything stretched to fit, all the other settings the same, just change colorization to tints, um, which is going to let you change the color of it later on, and click OK. Now, straight away, if I just press B, which is brush, and draw a line, it's going to draw the chain on it, okay, which is great. If I select a square and draw a square, it's got a stroke on it at the minute, but if I just click the bike chain, it's going to add it in. Um, squares go a bit crazy if you want to round them off. That looks kind of nuts. Um, you can change the stroke weight to make it thicker or thinner, or you can double click to actually go back to the pattern brush options and you can mess around in there and change some things up. So that's the first one, bike chain. Principles the same for the second one. This is slightly more complicated because it's a bit of a complicated pattern, but um, It's not too bad. So what we want to start with is go up to the rectangle tool and rounded rectangle tool Click and drag now if you press the up and down cursors You'll see you can change the rounded roundedness of the corners again You don't need to be exact, but you need to have a little bit of straight in the middle there Okay, so what we're going to do is change it to a stroke, drop the fill, and we're going to up the weight to about 10 pixels is fine. Shrink this down a little bit. Maybe drop it to 8 pixels. Yeah, 8's fine. Okay, so we're going to copy it again. So hold Option, um, select it first, hold Option. See those double cursors, and hold Shift. And you want to drag it across until you've got a bit of a sort of eye ellipse in the middle. Um, select both of these, object, expand, fill and stroke. And then we're going to copy and paste in place again. So it's command C, command shift V. So now we've got two. And we're going to add the stroke again. And we're going to up the stroke weight 
left until that little eye in the middle disappears. So almost full. I'll just go 4.1. That'll do. Object, expand. OK. Select one and unite it in Pathfinder. Select the other, unite it in Pathfinder. And then this is the bit of the strange bit. If, if you look at this one here, we need to cut out this shape from this one and need to cut out this shape from this one. So select the, this one first, and this is going to be the cutting out of the other side. So we're going to go up to Eraser. Shift and E is a shortcut. I'm just going to snip it there and snip it there. And then with direct select A, get rid of that bit. And then I'm going to select this one and I'm going to snip it across there and there. And I'm going to get rid of that bit. Now what we can do is select that one and this one and go to Pathfinder minus front. Then we select that one and that one holding shift and minus front again. And that's got as our chain link. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is split them in half to create our repeatable pattern, repeatable brush. So we're going to do that same thing again with the pen tool. So select one side, press P. And as you move along, you'll see that intersect. So just there, click that one, that one, there, there. Select this one with the V, press P. There you go. And there, and there. Direct select is A. Select all things on the left, get rid of them. You can press Command Y again, remember, and Command J. Oh, it's joined up the wrong ones, so we'll come back to that one. Select that, those there, get rid of them. Then direct select, you can select those two, Command J, Command J, Command J, Command J. Um, Command Y, back out. So once we've got this, we're going to select all of it, Option, click, hold Shift. And that's, it looks good, but it's not quite right. We need a small bit at the top and a big bit at the bottom. So we just need to flip vertically this one. So go back up to reflect or rotate. You want reflect, double click. It wants to be vertical. You see the difference? It just flips it around. Once we've got that, we can, if we just select this side and do two cursors left and we'll unite all this. So then the same process again, we're just gonna go to brushes, new brush, pattern brush, Let's call this chain link two. And remember colorization to tints, click OK. We zoom out and press B, which is brush. And there you go. Same thing applies to adding it to any kind of shape or path. Again, with the stroke weight, if I up this, it makes it thicker and lower it that way. Last one, super simple same method to start with but rather than having our rounded rectangle up to the maximum we're going to just drop it down so we get a little bit of straight on the sides on the edges let's just drop it down to about there let's up that stroke weight eight seven eight will do so we've got one here and we're going to duplicate this so option click drag hold shift and we want a bit of a gap between them then select your line tool and with that one still selected it's going to draw you a line with the same weight stroke so then you can just click and drag like that you want to change the cap to rounded and we're going to select these two and group them and do the centralization bit so we make sure this is in the in the middle so this time we're going to do a horizontal alignment it's already lined up and we're going to do the same thing with the center of these points so ungroup them command shift g just select one with the p we're going to do that intersect and select this one with v go back to p and then direct select that and that get rid of it select everything object expand okay <laughs> unite Sorry if I'm going too fast, but it's the same process over and over. So again, go back to brushes, new brush, um, pattern brush, and we're gonna do flat chain two. Colorization to tints, click okay. 
and if we hit B, we should have a flat chain. Now, like I said, you can customize this any way you want, but it's such a useful thing to have. You can then add it to text um, and all sorts of things. So get creative with it. But I hope that was useful. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you again next time. Thank you.